Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. Now the last time I had to do this maneuver was several years ago when I experienced a turbocharger issue and descended from 10,000 feet while in a steep spiral over Paso Robles Airport. When you're trying to get the airplane down within a tight radius due to either terrain or clouds or mechanical issues in my case, the steep spiral is a maximum performance maneuver that helps you achieve that. It combines a spiraling descent with turns around a point. To perform the maneuver to the commercial PTS standards, we'll want to make a minimum of three 360-degree turns of uniform radius around a ground reference object. We'll need to vary the bank angle to compensate for the effective wind to stay at the same distance from our ground reference point. Remember, when downwind, our increased ground speed requires steeper bank, and when upwind, our decreased ground speed requires a lesser bank angle to maintain equal radius around the reference point. We never want to exceed 60 degrees of bank, so if you begin the maneuver upwind, as I'm going to do in this video, you start with the shallowest bank. To maintain our target airspeed when downwind and at our steepest bank angle, we'll need to lower our pitch angle slightly. And conversely, when upwind at our shallowest bank angle, pitch attitude must be raised to maintain that same target airspeed. Now these control changes are smooth, gradual, and barely perceptible to passengers. After all, you should be flying this at a commercial pilot level. Well, let's go out now and spiral down in a Cessna Skyhawk. We've made our clearing turns, looking for traffic, sweep check, engine instruments, fuel, everything looks good. We've got an emergency landing area right under us, Fallbrook Airport. And we just made a position report on the radio. So at 5,500 feet, we're going to head into the slight west wind that we have today and begin the maneuver. Awareness of wind is a critical component. As we come around and that west wind moves behind our wing, it becomes a tailwind, increases our ground speed, and the need for a steeper bank angle. Trying to stay coordinated the entire time through the maneuver, maintain airspeed plus or minus 10, and look for traffic the whole time and not overload the airplane. As we come back to a west heading into the wind, we'll add a little power and just make sure the engine is still running and clear our shallowest bank angle and now as the wind moves behind the wing we have our steepest bank angle and as we come back to west on our second revolution we'll add a little bit of power clear the engine bring it back again and now the wind moves behind the wing and again becomes a tailwind increasing our ground speed, the need for steeper bank angle. And here we come around our third revolution. The wind's moving ahead of the wing. We shallow the bank out and we roll out plus or minus 10 degrees on our heading of west and resume a nice glide at 65. At that point, the maneuver's over. You're either gonna land straight ahead or go around. Common errors when performing steep spirals include not clearing the area or scanning for traffic, not maintaining a constant indicated airspeed, skidding or slipping through the maneuver, and not correcting for wind. Remember, if there is no wind when you perform this for your instructor or examiner, they'll probably introduce a simulated wind and expect you to explain how you'd compensate for it. A final error might be loss of orientation in the maneuver. If you're asked to perform three or even four spirals and you lose count or don't remember where to roll out, you'll fail the maneuver no matter how well you flew the airplane. Go out and practice steep spirals in your airplane. Be sure to try them to the left and to the right as well. Once you get the hang of it, it's a fun visual maneuver. Fly safely and fly often and I'll see you next time for another five minute fly the wing in-flight maneuver video.